Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlam wa sahlam. Welcome to this video, guys. My name is Yaqa Zaman. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day, enjoying yourselves on this nice cold day in the UK. And that rhymes as well. We're going through Mukhtas al Quduri and we have reached the Kitab of Iqrar. Right? If you guys enjoyed this series, if you guys are benefiting, hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button and hit the like button as well if you want. The like button, subscribe and share it with others as well. Right, so we're going to go through the meanings of the words then. So here we have وَإِنْ قَالُهُ عَلَيَّ خَمْسَةَ عَشَرَ darb darb it means multiplication. So multiply. وَالْحِسَاب is calculation. لَزِمَهُ necessary upon him. أَرَدْتُ I intended, أَرَدْتُ Dirahim Lazimahu Tis'a is nine Abi Hanifata Ibtida start Ba'daskutu al-Ghaya the end Yalzamu al-Ashara kulla Okay, so let's move a bit down then Qalu alay alf, alf is a thousand Thaman is price ishtaraytu I purchased, aqbidu I possessed, I possess ذكر عبدا بأي specific مقر له مقر مقر له إن شئت فسلم العبد إن شئت want all these words you guys should know by now لا شيء ثمن is price عين ب لا لا لم يعين specify عين يعين تعين يعيي ثمن خمر is wine خنزير is pork يقبل تفسير is explanation على ألف علي له علي ألف ألف thousand متى is goods زيوف is old or or bad quality جياد high quality all these words you guys have done before and that's why I'm not really focusing too much on موصول it means immediately immediately Suddiqa is to believe, to be believed. Mafsool and separate, opposite of all that. All right, let's do a bit of Tarkib now. Let's go into, let's go into a bit of Tarkib mode. See what you guys. So, in qala lahu alayya, alayya, remember lahu is khabar muqaddam. Lahu alayya is the hal, khamsata. له علي خمسة في خمسة يريد الضربة في الفايل and then الحساب is عطف on to ضرب لزمه خمسة واحدة خمسة واحدة وإن قال أردت في الفايل خمسة مع خمسة لزمه عشرة وإن قال له علي من درهم إلى عشرة جار مجرور لزمه تسعة عند أبي حنيفة فيلزمه الابتداء في الفايل وما بعده وتسقط الغاية وقال أبو يوسف ومحمد يلزمه العشرة كلها this is بدل of عشرة وإذا قال when he says له علي ألف 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 درهم من ثمن عبد اشتريته منه وَلَمْ أَقْبِذْ مجرور أو مجزوم رادا فَإِنْ أَذَكَرَ فِي الْفَائِلْ عَبْدًا مَفُولْ بِهِ بِعَيْنِهِ جَارْ مَجْرُورْ قِيلَ لِلْمُقَرِّ لَهُ وَإِنْ شِئْتَ فَسَلِّمْ أَمْر الْعَبْدًا مَفُولْ بِهِ وَخُذْ أَمْر الْأَلْفَ وإلا فلا شيء عليه وإن قال if you know why this is منصوب put in the comments قال له علي ألف من ثمن عبد ولم يعين لزمه الألف في قول أبي حنيفة ولو قال له علي ألف درهم من ثمن خمر أو خنزير لزمه الألف ولم يقبل يقبل تفسير نائب فائل of يقبل which is مجهول 
ولو قال له علي ألف من ثمن متاع وهي زيوف مبتدا خبر وقال المقر أو مقر له جياد منك هو هي جياد مبتدا لازمه الجياد فايل في قول أبي حنيفة وقال أبو يوسف ومحمد عطف إن قال ذلك موصولا صدق وإن قاله مفصولا لم يصدق لا يصدق Right, so there we have that. Now let's go into the explanation bit. Let's see if you guys can let's see if we, we can explain this. Now this is basically a whole set of uh, statements. What do each what does each statement actually mean? So if there's a guy and this guy says a statement, what do these statements mean? So number one, if a guy says this statement, right, this is the statement. Lahu alayya khamsat khamsatun. Okay, that's the first statement we're going to look at. Second statement. Lahu alayya dirham min dirham in ashara. Second statement. Um, third statement. Lahu alayya alfu dirham min thamani abdin ishtaraytu minhu. Walam akbidhu. Let me just put that all together in one. That's the third statement. Fourth statement. Lahu alayya alf min thamani abdin lam yu'ayyinhu. Right, it's up to there. Lahu alayya alf min thamani abdin. Right, so that's the fourth statement. The fifth statement. Wa qala lahu alayya alf min thamani mata'in wa hiya zuyufun. Right, so these are all the statements that we're going to be looking at today. Right, so these are all statements. We're going to be looking at today. So let's, should we just number these? I think we should. Let's number them one by one and then we'll do them. So you guys can follow. Are you guys enjoying this series? Are you enjoying the explanation? Right, so number one. Let's call this number one. Okay, so number one statement. What does this mean? So this can possibly mean two things. Okay, so does it mean multiplication or does it mean addition? If it means multiplication, then it means خمسةٌ في خمسةٍ means five times one. خمسةٌ في خمسةٍ Yeah, five times one, which equals five. Yeah. Um, if he means by this addition, five plus five. Yeah, five plus five. Then it means ten. All right, so that's basically what the first statement is. So let's have a read of that then. In qala, if he says, lahu alayya khamsatun, fi khamsatin, so five in five, and he intends by this darb al hisab, calculation. So five in five, like five inside of five. So one side inside of five, yeah, which is obviously five. لزمه خمسة واحدة. So it's not multiplication in the sense that five times five, five inside of five, five times one. وإن قال أردت خمسة مع خمسة. And if he says no, I meant five with five. I mean five plus five. لزمه عشرة. Then ten is going to be necessary on him. By the way, do you guys like it when I explain it in this way, or would you like me to, I don't know, explain it a different way? Please let me know in the comments so I can adjust these videos. So sometimes what happens is. Um, some of the some of you guys, you actually tell me suggestions to me in old videos. So obviously, it's a bit late for me to kind of make adjustments. So if you guys can let me know, then that would help me a lot. And by the way, if any of you guys like my video, subscribe, hit the hit the like button, share it with others as well. Thank you very much. It means a lot to me. Okay, number two now. Let's do number two. All right. So number two. Lahu alayya khamsatun. He says lahu alayya min dirham in ashara. So one, so what he means is one up to ten. Is ten included in this or is it not included? Right, do we include the tenth or do we not include the tenth? So this is where there's an ikhtilaf now. Right? So in other words, we know that um, one to ten, meaning 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right, is included. But what about the tenth one? Is the tenth one included? So he says, uh, According to Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he says that nine are necessary. So let's put A H there. He says nine. Nine is necessary. Okay. فَيَلْزَمُهُ الْإِبْتِدَاءُ So the ibtida is included. And وَمَا بَعْدَهُ وَتَسْقُطُ الْغَيَةُ And the end point drops. That's Imam Abu Hanifa's argument. He's saying basically when you say one to ten, it's not one to ten including ten. It's one up to ten, stop at ten. وَقَالَ أَبُو يُوسُفُ Muhammad, Imam Abu Yusuf and Imam Muhammad rahimahullah, they say no, it's actually all ten. Ten are included, right? So يَلْزَمُهُ الْعَشْرَةُ كُلُّهَا All ten are included. So they're saying basically when you say one to ten, what you mean by this is one, up one up to ten and including ten. Right? And this is all obviously to do with language, how people say things in society. So in English, how would you say to someone, I owe you one pound or one dollar up to ten? Does that mean nine? Does that mean ten? Maybe some people will say nine. Maybe some people will say ten. What do you guys say? Put it in the comments below. Okay, number statement number three now. Yeah, statement number Three. So I owe 1,000 from the value of from the value of a slave which I purchased. So this is the slave that I, that I purchased. So I bought the slave of the seller. So the seller has sold me the slave. Let's draw the seller here as well. This is the seller. And this guy's admitting that he owes the guy a thousand from the slave that he has, he has purchased of him. Saying that I owe him a thousand from the slave from this guy. But I haven't taken possession of the slave yet. The slave is still with him. He, he's got possession of it. Okay. So what's going to happen over here? So he says, in qala, If he says, Lahu alayya alfu dirhamin, I owe him a thousand dirhams from the price of a slave I purchased from him. Yeah, from him. Walam akbidhu, and so far I haven't taken possession. Possession is still with the seller. So he says, "Fa in dhakra abdan bi'ainihi." If he mentioned a specific slave, like he said, let's say the slave was called Zaid, right? So he's saying basically, Zaid is the one that I'm owed. I, I purchased, right? Qila lil muqarr lahu in shi'ta sallim al abd wa khud al alf wa illa fala shay ali. So it will be said to the seller, he's the muqarr lahu. Remember, this guy is the muqir, the guy is saying the thousand, and he's the muqarr lahu. In shi'ta, if you want, sallim, hand over the slave, hand over Zaid, wa khud al-alf, and take the thousand. Otherwise, if you don't hand over the slave, la shay alayh. There is nothing upon him because it's a trade. And in a trade, obviously, there needs to be two sides to it. So this is why he's saying, basically, um, in this scenario, He's admitting he owes a thousand, but he's saying that you still got the goods. Does that make sense? So this is scenario number three. Let's look at scenario number four now. Let's actually move this a bit down now as well. It's getting a bit cramped there. So next. Lahu alay alf min thamani abdin. So this time he says, I owe a thousand, but he just said, I owe a thousand from a slave. Right? So I owe a thousand from a slave. Uh, which slave is this? He hasn't specified. Yeah, he hasn't specified which. He just says, I owe this guy, I owe this guy, the seller, a thousand from the from the price of this slave, from the price of a slave. Is it Zaid? Is it another one? Has he received it? He hasn't mentioned any details about that. So, what's going to happen here is, in qala lahu alayya alfun, upon me is a thousand from the price of this slave, or price of a slave rather, وَلَمْ يُعَيِّنُ has specified it لَزِمَهُ الْأَلْفُ thousand is going to become necessary on him فِي قَوْلِ أَبِي حَنِيفَةَ according to Imam Abu Hanifa رحمه الله so according to Imam Abu Hanifa رحمه الله he says that he will have to give a thousand pounds or a thousand whatever it is for making that claim yeah, so um, okay, ah, actually I missed that statement didn't I hmm. so this is according to Abu Hanifa and 
Abu Hanifa. What does Abu Yusuf and Muhammad say? Put it in the comments below. If you know what Abu Yusuf and Muhammad say, put it in the comments below. What is their position on this? All right, I'll just leave that question mark so you guys can do a bit of research as well. I'm going to tell you everything. Okay, this is the fifth statement now. The fifth statement, I apologize, I actually should have highlighted this one. Lahu alayya alf alf dirhamin min thamani khamrin aw khanzirin. Right, so this is the fifth statement. Uh, I owe a thousand, I owe a thousand from the price of wine or pig that I purchased. Here, yeah, so wine, I don't know how to draw a pig, I just have to draw like. The wiggly tail, ba ba. Okay, so thousand pounds, a thousand I owe him from money that I basically I owe him in a, from a, a a trade deal that was basically buying, buying this. So he says, um, what's going to happen over here? He says, qala lahu alfu dirhamin. I owe him a thousand from the from the price of wine. Or pork that I purchased from him, I, have, I still haven't paid him yet. alfu walam yuqbal tafsiruhu. The thousand will become necessary upon him, but the explanation this it will not be accepted. This it's as though he didn't even say this because a Muslim is not allowed to buy wine or buy pork, so this will be considered to be ignore. Yeah, ignore this, and he just has to give a thousand. Um, okay, and the sixth statement, the last and final statement, what is this one? So, he says, uh, let me just do this in a different color. He says, alayya. If he was to say, I owe him a thousand, one thousand, min thamani mata'in, from goods, but the thousand is in zuyuf form. So there's some unknown goods that he hasn't specified. Could be a car, could be a laptop, could be a phone. But he has not specified exactly what it is. And he said it's Zuyuf. Zuyuf means bad quality coins. Like the deal was done on bad quality coins. So in this case, will this be accepted or not? Will this statement, this thing that he's said at the end, will it be accepted? Will it not be accepted? So he says, وَقَالَ الْمُقَرِّ لَهُ yeah, So in thamani mata'in, the price of goods, where he has zuyuf, right, and the thousand is zuyuf. وَقَالَ الْمُقَرِّ لَهُ جِيَاد But the other guy, the, the seller, the parent seller, he's saying, no, it's supposed to be good quality. Yeah, so what's that? He's angry, good quality. It's supposed to be good quality, right? Yeah. So according to Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah, if the guy says good, then he's got to give good. You look at what the muqarlahu says basically. This is according to who? Abu Hanifa. And according to Imam Abu Yusuf and Muhammad rahimahullah, they say this statement will be taken. In other words, this is the statement you take, you do not take the statement of the other guy. The other guy's statement is not taken. Right, this is the position of Abu Yusuf and Muhammad. So apologies for cramming it all in. Um, so he says, وَقَالَ أَبُوْ يُوسُفُ وَمُحَمَّدُ Imam Abu Yusuf and Muhammad say, إِنْ قَالَ If he said that mausulan, meaning this statement, the, the guy doing iqrar, صُدِّقَ He will be believed. وَإِنْ قَالَهُ مَفْصُولًا If he was to say it separately, as in the two sentences, he has separated it with a gap, like he said an hour later or a day later. لا يصدقوا He will not be believed. And there you have it. Right, there you have it, guys. There you have it. Now, one of the things some, some of you guys asked me is, uh, when I explain this, do I go into the details, the deals and proofs? of? I don't really go into the details and proofs in these videos. And I wish I could, but just we don't have time. Hopefully, inshallah, maybe if in the future I can do separate Quduri ones where I simply break down the thick of it, right? And that's something I do in Hidayah, but that's something I hope to do in the future sometime. Right, so questions for you guys then. So there are now, how many are there? There's six, six statements that are mentioned over here. First question, if a guy says, خمسة في خمسة in Arabic, what does that actually mean? 
So it can either mean 5 times 1, or it can mean 5 times 5. If a guy was to say, I owe you 1 up to 10, does the 10th one get included or not? Abu Hanifa says it does not, and Sahibain say it does. Number three, if a guy says, I owe a person a thousand pounds from this slave that I purchased, which I haven't possessed yet, which is, the slave is called Zaid, then the seller has a choice. Either he hands the slave over and collects the money, or he leaves it. Um, fourth, if a guy says, I owe a thousand pounds from a slave and doesn't specify any further details, in this case, what happens? So the seller the, the, is owed a thousand, that's it. He's just owed a thousand. Um, according to Imam Hanif, what does Sahibain say? I left that to you guys. Figure it out. Look in the books. Now, what I would suggest, if you want to look in books, try to look in commentaries or the Hashia, the footnotes of Qudud, if you have good Hashia, or the commentary like Al-Lubab or Al-Jawharatun Nayyira. Al-Lubab, Al-Jawharatun Nayyira. Number six, if a guy was to say, I owe, I owe the seller a thousand pounds from wine I purchased from him. This will be ignored, the wine details, and he owes a thousand. And finally, if a guy says, I owe a thousand pounds because of something I purchased from this seller, but the thousand, sorry, thousand coins are bad quality or low quality ones. So Abu Hanifa said, the seller statement will be accepted and Sahibain say, that if the statement of Zuyuf was said immediately with the thousand, then it will be accepted, otherwise it will not. Yeah, so did you guys enjoy that lesson? Yes? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all of you guys. May Allah accept it from all of us. Thank you to all my patrons, guys, for make the real special dua for them, guys. Honestly, please make special dua for my patrons. Um, may Allah put barakah in their wealth and health and time, because it's after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's the patrons who are motivating me the most to make these videos, support my channel on a monthly basis. If any of you guys like the work I do and you guys want to support me on Patreon, please consider it. It means a lot to me. You can give anything you like on a monthly basis or even a one-off payment as well. Um, and that's it, guys. Details are in the description below or you can contact me. Emails there as well. I'll see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.